So the past couple of days I've been pulling together some notes and some research on some content I want to do. And then one of Jessica Valenti's videos came across my feed. It's almost as if watching your country, watching the nation's highest court talk about whether or not you live or die as if your humanity was a bullet point on a legal brief. It's almost as if that is emotional and that is humiliating and dehumanizing. And maybe just maybe that is not something that we should be discussing logically and flatly. And maybe doing so reminds half this country that we are not seen as full human beings or citizens. It made me think about the questions that women are asked that men are never asked. The questions that they ask of us are just so insulting, so dehumanizing, it makes me want to vomit. And just the things that they say about us, to us, Just the words they use to refer to us. Um, hearing people refer to modern coupling as the dating market. As the women are commodities to be consumed. Quote, a good sexual distribution strategy keeps more people happy. End quote. Which people? But certainly not women. Quote, we need monogamy to constrain male sexual desire. When has monogamy ever done that? When has monogamy ever constrained male sexual desire or sexual behavior? When was that? I'll tell you when it was. It was on the 12th of never. Because men never had consequences when they broke the monogamy contract. Their reputations weren't ruined by committing adultery. Ours were. We didn't even have any legal personhood, but the odds of us surviving economically if we committed adultery were devastating. Honestly, it was a better deal to just become a prostitute in those days because at least you got paid. At least whatever cut of the earnings the madam gave you made sure that you could eat and you had a roof over your head might have been better than taking your chances with that guy who threw you out and left you to starve if you cheated on him. Were men ever thrown out and left to starve when they cheated on their wives? I don't remember that in history class. Quote, if you don't like men's behavior, change the reward system. What the fuck does that mean? Women are a reward for good behavior? We're like a treat that you get when you sit, when we tell you to sit. Sit, boy. Ooh, good boy. What the actual fuck? How many different ways are we going to come up with to constantly reinforce men's sense of entitlement? Quote, I think it's very difficult to take back reproductive sovereignty from women entirely. And I don't even know if that would be desirable. End quote. You don't know? You don't know if giving women sovereignty over their own bodies is or is not desirable. You don't know if taking that away from us would be desirable or not. If you don't know the answer to that question, you're a fucking monster. Quote, the dad is a spare part for the first two years, end quote. I wish these men would decide which it is. Are fathers valuable and essential, or are they a spare part? You can't have it both ways. We're on what, week two now of trying to explain to men why we prefer the bear. It should be obvious, guys. Because the bear is not our number one predator. Men are. Much larger chance you'll be unalive by a man than by a bear. How come nobody cares about male loneliness? Men have spent so many thousands of years trying so hard to not be like women that they're barely human. There are a lot more single women than there used to be. Women can be alone, romantically speaking, 
but we're very rarely lonely. Why? Because we've spent years building and nurturing friendships. We have strong platonic connections in our local communities, across the country, and even across the world. Because we pour into people. We don't choose who to develop an emotional connection with based on whether or not they want to have sex with us. Why do we seem unconcerned about male loneliness? Because we gave you the solution and you've ignored it. If you didn't cling so tightly to patriarchy and misogyny, you wouldn't be lonely because you don't bother to develop and you prevent through social punishment other men from developing the skills that you need to make those platonic emotional connections. So most of you don't have them. And even if it was our responsibility to fix it, which it's not, and even if we wanted to fix it, which we don't, we can't. Only you can fix this. And women are smart enough to know not to get involved in a social problem that we can't fix. So y'all men get together and come up with a plan because only you can do this. You're always running your mouths about how men built the world and there are certain things that only men can do and that we can't do. This is one of them, asshole. The power to fix it is within you. Relations between men and women would get better if we just returned to traditional gender roles. Better for who? You know, a big reason why the world is so fundamentally fucked today is because most people are more interested in order than freedom. They're more interested in comfort than happiness. They're so afraid of the unknown that they will retreat into something horrible, some of them even knowing it's horrible, just to avoid doing the work of building something better, which is basically most conservative ideology having to do with marriage and family. If we just went back to the good old days, the old days were not good for most people. You know, patriarchy wasn't all bad. Uh, it also had elements of provide and protect. But why did men have to provide? Because women were locked out of the economic sphere. We were not allowed to participate in the marketplace. And in many parts of the wor world, we're still not allowed to. So to turn back and say, oh, the fact that we were expected to provide for you, that's a good thing. Yeah, you only had to provide because you took everything away from us. You didn't let us go and get our own. And we had to completely submit to you if we wanted to eat or have a roof over our head or not watch our children starve. And don't even get me started on protection. Y'all have never done that because you're the biggest danger. If you're a woman, the person most likely in the world to harm you is the man sleeping in the bed next to you, your husband, your romantic partner, you know, the guy that's supposed to protect you. Here's my question. Who protects you from him? So forgive me if I get a little upset when I hear people say, oh, but patriarchy has positives. Bitch, no, it doesn't. A man told me on a live a few days ago that I was going against nature by not having children. I didn't get to respond to him because the host of the live, ironically, a conservative, shouted him off the panel, basically. Uh, he got very indignant on my behalf. Um, great, nice. I don't need you to fight my battles for me, but that was very gracious of him. But I wanted to say to him, Every single thing that you do, the way that you live and breathe is against nature. Because women had resources and we had the ability to get resources. You said, okay, what if we cut off their avenues to get resources? What if we erase their legal personhood? So when private property became a thing, they can't own land, they can't sue in court. What if we removed any semblance of bodily autonomy? Uh, the founding slaveholders of our country talked a lot about natural rights in their writings. Natural rights given to you by nature and nature's God. 
But what right does any person have to tell me what to do with my own body? But y'all thought and still think that you do. Every single policy measure directed at women up until about 30, 40 years ago is fundamentally unnatural. It's about limiting our power, clipping our wings so that we are more accessible to you. Just some thoughts I've been having.